So I had a recent comment on um, one of my videos around my daughter ranking all my watches that said, well now what are your thoughts? And to be honest with you, it didn't even cross my mind. So thank you for that comment. And, and this is the video uh, ranking the watches that I've owned. This won't take a huge amount of time because I, I haven't actually owned a massive amount. Um, and obviously my views have changed um, since buying the watches to now. And I do have in-depth videos on all of these watches. So if you want uh, the details um, and far more detailed views, please go and look at those videos. This is literally going to be a ranking and a few negatives and positives as to why uh, that watch sits where it does. You'll have to excuse me if I look down there because that's where my list is. And I've left this space fairly vacant so I can put some pictures up here um, as I talk about the watches. So my favourite, probably is no surprise, is my uh, Zenith. This is a Zenith Pilot uh, Big Date Flyback Ceramic. I recently bought it for my 40th birthday. It is the most complicated watch of all my watches. It's extremely comfortable. I love the quick change um, strap system on it. Uh, I love the fact you get two straps with it. Uh, I love the ceramic case and so on and so forth. It's my most expensive watch, so it doesn't always mean it's gonna be your favorite, but in this case, it's also my newest. So I'm still in that honeymoon period. Um, and yeah, for sure, this is my favorite watch that I've owned to date. My second favourite watch is my Seamaster Amiga um, Aquaterra. Um, I got that for my 30th birthday. I still love that watch. It looks great on the bracelet. I currently have it on a um, NATO strap. It's the Omega Seamaster Aquaterra Golf Edition with the 8500 calibre movement. So it's got green elements in it. So with the green and black NATO, it just looks fantastic. Um, it's a very versatile watch. I love the jump out complication. I love the display case back. I love the attention to detail on the dial. Um, unlike the later models, I prefer the crown shape on this. I prefer the fact that it's got a um, date surround, so it's got a window on it. The attention to detail of the hour plots, the way they're all chamfered and polished and the way they're all shaped towards each other, even the date window, it's just a cracking watch. It's still one of my favourite watches that I've owned. Um, the top two are ones that I'll never sell anyway. But yeah, I just love that watch. Um, my third favourite watch, uh, probably isn't a surprise, is my Cheetah Pelagos um, 39. Um, again, with the small collection that I've got, I think it just fits in really well. Um, I don't have any other dive watches. It's versatile enough that I could probably lose one of my watches um, and have that as my more dressy watch, which sounds ridiculous, but I, I'd happily wear it to weddings. I'd happily wear it out to nice dinners. Um, and I just love the aesthetic of it. It has its issues, as I documented in a recent video, but overall, I love that watch. So number four, what's number four? My IWC Mark 18 Le Petit Prince. I do love this watch. I love the blue dial. I love the bracelet. I love the clasp. I love the simplicity of the design. Um, I love the fact that it, at the moment in my small collection it is easily my most dressy watch because of all the polished elements on it, especially as my Seamaster is on um, a NATO strap. Um, but I'm not sure I need it in my collection. I'm not sure. I'm going to see how I go over the next year and I might end up selling that watch. But in terms of aesthetics and favourite watches that I've owned, the fact that it's still in my collection says it all. It's a fantastic watch. Um, it's so slim, I think it's 11 millimetres thin. Um, some people don't like the fact that the 20 millimetre bracelet doesn't taper. It doesn't bother me. Would it be nicer if it tapered more? It probably would, to be honest with you. But it's quite a small watch and it doesn't need that tapering bracelet to make it visually look smaller on your wrist. It does have a longer lug to lug, I think it's 51 millimetres lug to lug, so some people can't wear it. But for my wrists and for my tastes uh, and for my small watch collection, I absolutely love it. And what you'll notice is the top four are the four watches that are currently in my collection. So no surprises as to the fact that they're my um, top four favourites. So my next favourite is probably my Tudor Black Bay 58 Blue. Um, I sold that really when I bought the IWC because I didn't need or want two blue um, dials in what is a very small collection, it's only four or five watches. Um, and I love that watch, but I've got a little bit of an issue with the Black Bay range, whereby for me, if I want a vintage watch, I'll buy a vintage watch. 
Um, I get that it's a vintage watch with modern robustness, uh, but you get the vintage aesthetic. But for me, if it's vintage, it's vintage. If it's modern, it's modern. And I'm, I'm, I'm struggling to find the want to have a modern watch with vintage vibes. And I know that's been a trend for a very long time. And I've owned a few and you'll, you'll see on my list as I go through them. But for me, I'm a bit more linear than that. It would seem I like, I like either modern watches or vintage watches. I don't like modern watches with vintage vibes. So the bracelet always irritated me. I know a lot of people, they, they do disappear when you wear it, okay? So the um, faux rivets on the bracelet do disappear when you wear it, you don't see them, but they continue to bug me throughout my ownership. Um, the rest of the case is actually fine. If you put a modern bracelet on that, it would actually look like a very modern watch. So I did really like that watch, but the bracelet and the clasp uh, without the micro adjustment, didn't have T-fit, kind of killed it for me a bit. Um, so yeah, still love that watch, but that's the reason it's not with me anymore. Next is my Tudor Black Bay GMT. Again, I love that watch. The aesthetic of that watch was um, amazing. I loved the, I, I love the Rolex Pepsi, right? I'm just gonna put it out there. The, I've said it before, the GMT Master II, I, I think it's fantastic. I think this watch looked nicer than that. I think the colours on the bezels were nicer than that. Um, I preferred it um, aesthetically over the Rolex, but it was big. Uh, and even on my seven inch wrist, it was just heavy. It was the heaviest watch I've owned by far. The 22 millimeter bracelet made it wear even bigger visually than it needed to. It would have helped if it was a 20 millimeter bracelet, I think. Maybe, no, it wouldn't still be with me. It is too thick. The case design, even with the um, cutouts that they did on the GMT compared to the earlier Black Bay Rangers to make the case look thinner, it was still proportionally wrong. The case was too thick, the bezel was too thin. It just didn't look quite right from a number of different angles. But aesthetically, I love it. And I've already said to my wife, if they bring out a Tudor Black Bay 58 GMT, especially now they've got the Jubilee offerings, I would be buying that straight away because then you've got what is effectively quite a modern looking watch uh, with a modern bracelet and a modern clasp. So that is like a dream watch. Ooh, dream watch, a watch I very much like, won't get carried away. So yeah, that's where we are. That's number uh, six, loved it, too big, um, too heavy, had to get rid of it. Uh, next, number seven, my Tudor Black Bay 58 uh, Gilt. Same reasons, but more so than my blue. It lent too heavily into um, vintage vibes and I knew that when I bought it and I was kidding myself that it was just a black and gold watch and I could make and I could in my head rationalize the fact that it looks quite modern and it's not gilt it's just black and gold but the head again on it is brilliant the dial was fantastic but the bracelet and the clasp again are the two things that made me sell it and also I replaced that with the blue one so I bought the blue one and then both at the same time and kept the blue so again it lost its place in my in my collection uh, number eight is my Seiko Prospects, bear with me, SPB213J1. So everyone always talks about Seikos. I fancied having a bit of a play with one. I was trying to solve the white dial bug for myself. I know it's a silver dial, but in lots of lights it looked white. White and blue, it's a fantastic combination for me um, in terms of what I like. Um, but the bracelet was poor, um, the clasp was poor. Uh, the dial and watch head were actually very good. The date window looked a bit poorly executed. The accuracy was pretty good as well, actually. I can't remember what it was now, but I remember it being pretty decent. I'm pretty sure it was under two seconds a day, fast. So a really nice watch in many ways. And the bezel action on it was actually very good as well. And it had a pretty high spec. Um, you could tell they slowed down the beat rate to increase the power reserve because the hand sweep was very slow. And you could literally see it compared to other automatic watch where they've, they've got quite nice sweeps. Um, but yeah, I kind of had my time with it and ultimately I was leaning towards my other watches. So when I was looking to put a watch on in the morning, I wasn't going for the Seiko. I was going for my Tudors or my Omega or, or, or something else, my IWC. So it didn't really have a place in the collection. I'm glad I bought it, I'm glad I owned it. Um, um, and yeah, so that's where that one went. Um, surprisingly, next is my G-Shock. Uh, so this is a GA211 OET 2AER or the Casio Oak in blue and grey. Um, this is still in my collection and the reason it sits above some of my other watches is really for that reason. Um, it's a very cheap watch, it is what it is, right? It's like a, it's like a plasticky, rubbery uh, watch, it's very robust. Um, 
it has a place in my collection because I wear it when I don't want to wear my other watches when we go on and do activities and uh, I don't want to damage my other watches um, I do like how it looks um, I'm surprised even me I'm kind of even thinking about it I'm surprised where it sits within my overall rankings but but there it is um, I do quite like it as a watch it is it has got good proportions compared to other G-Shocks I do enjoy wearing it from time to time it's got great functions on it in terms of second time zone so it's actually a very good travel watch it's got good water depth um it's come go anywhere do anything watch um you can't wear it to nice meals and stuff but for beating around and traveling with it it's a very good watch to have so number 10 is my tudor pedagos 42 blue this will probably be a surprise and uh, shock to some uh, i know this watch is very very popular for me i just didn't get on with it I bought it knowing full well I wanted a full titanium uh, tool watch. I was absolutely positive that's what I wanted. Um, it's not. <laughs> uh, it was definitely a watch by mistake. I think I probably had three watches at the time. Um, and it, it fits in the three watch collection, but it wore very big. I couldn't get a comfortable fit. Even with the clasp design, I would have to have it on the spring loaded element. And those springs are quite tight. So it just digs into your wrist the whole time. Um, on any of the other adjustments, it was too loose. Um, I didn't like the fact that it had a steel case back and a steel clasp and everything else was titanium. Unlike the Pelagos 39, it's all titanium. Um, and it was too tallish, which sounds like a stupid thing to say because I knew what I was buying. But yeah, it, it turned out to be too tallish and I had issues with it. I had the loom fall out of the bezel. I had the bezel seized twice. So it went back to Tudor three times and I just lost confidence in it and it wound me up. So that is probably a big part of why it sits where it does in my collection in terms of my um, favourites. If it didn't have those issues, it still wouldn't be with me, but it might sit a bit higher. Um, but I wasn't ready for an all tool focused watch like that. And because of those reasons, that's where it sits in the list. Uh, number 11, my Longies Conquest Sport Ceramic. That watch was old. I wore that a lot. Um, Oh, man, I must have worn that for four or five years, pretty much straight. And I did like it, but it didn't have any loom on it, which always bugged me. Um, and towards the end of my time with it, before I sold it, I just fell out of love with the look of it. Um, it had a sunburst black dial with steel applied markers with no loom, but there should be loom because it's a sports watch. Um, the ceramic bezel kind of lifted it a bit and then it had a black strap and the clasp on it was poor. It was a butterfly clasp, but it was very poor. It was very wiggly. It wasn't built very well. Tolerances weren't very good. Um, I enjoyed my time with it. and had it for a very long time. But when I look back over the watches that I've owned, I'm surprised it's as low as it is, given how long I had it for and how much I wore it. But there it is. Uh, and number 12 is my Zelos Horizons GMT Frost Edition. So this was very much an experiment into uh, micro brands. Zelos has a very strong following in the watch community. People are very passionate about them. Um, and they, there's no denying they offer a huge amount of value for money. The prices of the watches for what you get is a bit daft. And I've been, I go and look at their site now and again, and that remains the case. But the bracelet wasn't great. The clasp was clunky. It was quite unpleasant to use their micro adjust on it. I know this is from that watch. I'm, I'm sure they've improved them since and, and got different systems. Um, I had some hair under the dial. Um, they have limited money, right? I think, I can't remember how much the watch costs, but it was low hundreds. It wasn't even high hundreds. So for what you're getting, it's extremely good value, extremely good value. But again, when you look at your watch box and you've got Tudors and Omegas and, and other watches to reach for, I just wasn't reaching for it because the lack of quality at that price point put me off. Um, so yeah, that's why um, I sold that one. So there you go, 12 watches uh, ranked in order from top, my favourite, to my least favourite. Um, as always, if you've got any questions, let me know.